Okay, so in this video, we are considering our second example of the subspace theorem, and we will consider the space of 2 by 2 symmetric matrices. So call this space W. So we will take the matrices that are 2 by 2, so matrices A, say, that lie in R2 times 2. If you remember, this is the set of 2 by 2 matrices with real entries. But we don't take all of them. We only take the ones that are symmetric, so where a transpose equals itself. Well, as always, if we want to use a subspace theorem, we have to have a subset of a, no a, subset of a known vector space. Well, we are considering here 2 by 2 matrices that are symmetric, so this is clearly a subset of the set of all 2 by 2 matrices. And we know that the space of m by n matrices, where m and n are fixed, is a vector space for any m and n, and so the set of all 2 by 2 matrices is a vector space. So we can use the subspace theorem. Right, the question is whether or not W is a vector space, but as it is a subset of a known vector space, we do not have to check all 10 conditions, but only the two closure axioms. So let's check closure under addition first. And I'll be lazy here, I'll just write plus. So closure under addition. Well, this means that we have to take two elements of our space and show that the sum is still an element in the space. Well, the elements in our space are 2 by 2 matrices. You can call the first one A, the second one B. Oh, sorry, I'll write take. So we are taking two elements of the space, so A, B are elements in W. Therefore, they are 2 by 2 matrices that are symmetric. And so A is symmetric, A transposed equals A, and B is symmetric, B transposed equals B. And we want to show that if we add A and B, the new matrix is also an element of W. Well, clearly if A and B are 2 by 2 matrices, if you add two 2 by 2 matrices, the result is a 2 by 2 matrix, so this is obvious. And now we have to show that the matrix A plus B is also a symmetric matrix. Well, a matrix is symmetric if it's transpose equals itself. So property, properties of the transpose, if you transpose a sum, you can add the individual transpose, so A transpose plus B transpose. But by assumption, both A and B are symmetric, so A transpose equals A, B transpose equals B, so we get that this is A plus B. And you see we transposed the matrix A plus B, and we end up with the matrix itself, A plus B. Therefore, A plus B is symmetric. Therefore, A plus B is an element of W. So we have closure under addition. Let's check the second axiom, closure under scalar multiplication. Well, what do we take? We take an element of our space, so a symmetric matrix, therefore A transpose equals A, and we take an arbitrary real number. So k is any real number of your choice. Then we have to prove that if we multiply a by the real number k, the matrix ka is still an element of the space w. Well, if a is a 2 by 2 matrix and you multiply the matrix by k, it is still a 2 by 2 matrix. All we have to show now is that the matrix ka is also symmetric. Well, let's see if we transpose the matrix. Properties of the transpose, we know that the transpose of ka will simply be k times a transpose. 
as k is a real number, by assumption is symmetric, so a transpose equals itself. And so you see we transpose the matrix Ka, and we end up with the matrix itself. Therefore Ka is symmetric, therefore Ka is indeed an element of our space W. So we do have closure under addition, and we do have closure under scalar multiplication, therefore by the subspace theorem, W is a vector space. Okay, now that we have proved that the set of 2 by 2 symmetric matrices is a vector space, namely a subspace of R2 cross 2, the set of all 2 by 2 matrices, we are going to find a basis and the dimension of our space. So if you go back, our space consists of 2 by 2 matrices that are symmetric, and whenever you look for a basis of the space, whatever your space is, you have to simply find the elements of your space explicitly. So let's do that now. So we're considering a matrix A, that is the 2 by 2 matrix. The entries are unknowns, so we can call them say A, B, C, D. And the matrix A is in the space, W, if it satisfies the equality, A transpose equals itself. Well, let's see. What is A transposed? The first column will be the first row of A, so A, B. The second row of A will be the second column of A transpose, C, D. So this is A transpose. This has to equal A, which is A, B, C, D. Well, this is A. And now we use the basic fact that if you have an equality of matrices, they have to have corresponding entries, the same corresponding entries. So A equals A. This is a vacuous equality. Then C must equal B. This one is not vacuous. Then B equals C. This one is just redundant. And finally D equals D. This one is vacuous. And you see the only way for a 2 by 2 matrix to be symmetric is if its entries are solutions of this linear system. Although what we have is a rather trivial linear system. If it were more complicated, we would construct the augmented matrix and then we're reduced to find all solutions. But here we don't have to. A equals A is vacuous. This is trivial. It says nothing. D equals D is trivial. Same thing. And now these are redundant. B equals C. C equals B, they're saying the same thing. So we can just keep one, and you see that our condition is actually quite simple. The only restriction is that C must be equal to B. So if you think of it, the matrix A has to be equal to. There is no restriction on to A, so A can be anything. And now here you have a choice. Either you let B equal C, or you let C equals B, it doesn't matter. So let's go with B. But whatever B is, then you have no more freedom for C. C has to be equal to B. And finally, there is no restriction on D, and so D can be anything you want. And so you see, there is no restriction on A, B, or C, uh, A, B, or D. So A, B, or D here, A, B, and D are simply parameters, there are free variables. And as always, if you want to extract a basis for the space, you have to split the parameters. So you'll have A times the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, plus B times the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0, plus D times the matrix 0, 0, 0, 1. And so you see, any matrix that is symmetric must be a linear combination of these three matrices. So this will be your first generator, you can call it V1. 
This is your second generator, call it V2. And this is your third generator, call it V3. So we have a set of generators for our space of symmetric 2 by 2 matrices. We only have to prove now that they are linearly independent generators. So what we have right now is this. As every matrix in our space is a combination of these three vectors, these three matrices, they are generators. And so the span of the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, and this one we called V1, our first generator. The other matrix was 0, 1, 1, 0, our second generator. And finally, the matrix 0, 0, 0, 1, our third generator, we called it V3. We know that the span of these three matrices is the entire space W. And as we have said a second ago, we have to prove that these are not only generators, but that they are linearly independent. So we consider an arbitrary linear combination of these three generators. giving the zero vector, well, let's see. If you combine this linear combination, and uh, we want to prove that this equation has only the trivial solution, therefore C1 must equal C2 must equal C3 must equal zero, if you add this combination up as a single matrix, you will find that this is quite simply the matrix C1, C2, C2, C3 equals, well this is the zero vector, the zero vector of your space, right? This is the zero element. As we have a space of two by two matrices that are symmetric, the zero vector, the zero element, is the zero two by two matrix. And so you see that the only way through a linear combination of the three generators to get the zero vector, the zero element of our space, is for C1 to be equal to zero, C2 to be equal to 0, and C3 to be equal to 0. And so you see that our linear combination giving the 0 vector only has the trivial solution. Which proves that the elements, V1, V2, and V3, are linearly independent. independent. And so we now have a basis. These three elements, whoops, V2, V3, are generators and they are linearly independent. So therefore this, if you prefer, as matrices 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is a basis of W. And finally, if we ask what is the dimension of our vector space, well, it is, as always, the number of elements in any basis. Our basis contains three elements, and so we have a three-dimensional vector space. And so you see, if you look at R2 cross 2, the set of all 2 by 2 matrices, that is a four-dimensional vector space, and you have a subspace of R2 cross 2 as our space W, the space of symmetric matrices, and this is a three-dimensional subspace of the four-dimensional vector space that contain all that contains all 2 by 2 matrices. So we have a 3-dimensional subspace living in a 4-dimensional vector space that is R2 cross 2. And that's it.